thing right here. <laughs> Look at this bad boy. Yeah, what do you think? So, oh, he's getting on right now. So this is how it would normally go. It's over Hello? how it would normally be. Yeah. Just do Recording. Hello, Willie. Hello. I'm gonna put how you doing, sir? on camera. I'm good. How are you? Oh, you look good. <laughs> Thank you look you. good as me. <laughs> this is a very, very special edition of No One Right Way. Um, I grew up in the projects and um, ready for the world meant everything to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Uh, go to prom. You know what I'm saying? That song would okay. come out. Uh, okay. It would be, it, there was a lot. There was a lot. A lot of moments. So what city did you grow up in? I grew up in uh, Henderson, Nevada. Oh, okay. It's a little okay. methamphetamine town right outside of Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and we do yeah. podcast, No One Right Way. And I'm just honored to meet you. And I got some questions for you. And we got a little bonus surprise for you. And uh, okay. it's going to be good. That's what's up. Uh, so, a couple other members are going to be joining as well. That'll be awesome. Okay. He, he's hooking it up right now. My main man, Evan Cassidy. What's up? What's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey, good to have you to have you. Thank you. All right, man. So first of all, I want to know how you guys got into the music business. Like, what was that about? Well, like you, were kids. Um, you weren't that old. I know, man. I was 17 years old when we got into the business. And, you know, for the most part, it was we met each other competing against one another in high school talent shows. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. yeah. And then so after one particular talent show, John Eaton, he plays the bass in the band. Uh, he was with my group at the time. And, you know, he told he told us that uh, these other guys, Melvin and Gordon, had some equipment that we didn't have. So when we linked up, you know, they, they really didn't have the type of equipment, you know. We all had like the starter stuff, you know, yeah. little small amps. We had a little organ keyboard, you know, so we were just trying out some stuff. And uh, we started, you know, writing music together. And um, after one studio session, Gordon thought it was a good idea to take the music to Detroit and try to get it played on the air. So that's what we did. And uh, a DJ by the name of the Electrifying Mojo played it on his uh, station and the phones lit up. It was tonight is what was played. So the phones lit up and he hooked us up with his attorneys. They in turn hooked us up with a, a radio promoter uh who also promoted records for mca so that's how we got our deal oh wow yeah but so how long have you guys been practicing though um you know we were still wet behind the ears gerald and i you know we kind of grew up in music playing in like the uh middle school and high school bands you know so we we actually uh read music as well uh, but in the band, we all played by ear. So I'd say from the time we start, we, we cut the first record, um, it, it may have been a year, you know. Um, I was still 17 at the time. So, you know, it, it, when we cut our deal, I was still 17. So, you know, but it was like a year. Melvin and Gordon had just graduated from high school. Uh, they were a year ahead of me and Gerald. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that was a great experience. That's awesome, man. Did you guys know, like, okay, so were you guys working at the time? Did you have like 17 year old jobs? Like some of you had to work at like a restaurant and somebody had to do some other stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. So it we had a little, little summer jobs. Willie. Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Oh, I, didn't I don't know. see I, you. Can you. How see you doing, me? sir? I'm trying to, can you see me? Because I don't no, know how to work can't see you. There's a if you tap on the screen, there's I'm, a I'm camera. Tap on the screen here. A camera. This, yeah, it's it's probably like a what a what a, a mark a, a, across it. Just tap on it. And there oh, I got to be right there. there. Yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm talking there to both y'all. Can both y'all see me? Yes, I can sir. see you. Okay. Uh, uh, like I was telling Willie, it's an honor to meet you too, sir. Yes, I'm. I am. I'm here. I'm being seen instead of you. <laughs> I'll get to that later. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, we'll get Gordon, to that right now. You can tell me right we now. Started. We were talking uh, about how it all started, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
out well Matt, Melvin and I started writing songs together. The first band we had uh probably was the seventh grade. And he used to he used to be in some groups at Longfellow Junior where they used to sing like uh the Temptation songs or name some of those groups, Willie, that was just uh it's you that I need. Them type of uh, groups. Okay. <laughs> um, what's the name of that group? Like Brownstone and Enchantment. people like that. Uh, it was Enchantment. Enchantment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mel Melvin and uh, the guys then after they did the seventh grade talent show, we got a band together. Got a band together. Hey, you breaking up, Gordon. Right. Uh, well, let me get to another internet area. It's all it's all good, my man. Yeah. It's all well, we good, uh Jordan. we started uh writing and uh because we didn't have no fancy instruments, so we were just doing big guitar and piano. He had an old raggedy piano in the basement <laughs> that he took <laughs> piano lessons on. I took guitar lessons. In elementary, my grandmother was paying for it. She was a gospel singer, and she got mad at me when I quit. I told the music player teacher, "Just show me how to solo," and he, he showed me the basic uh, scales to do. I quit. And my grandmother got mad at me and said, "You'll never, uh, if you had to play studio music, you'll never be able to do it because you don't know how to read." <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and uh, she was very strict. Uh, she took care of me uh, and my sister wife. My mom went to nursing school, but the the, the gospel music side, I, me and Melvin also played in church together at his church. And uh, but I was already learning music uh, through cleaning up the church because that was my grandfather's job. Oh wow! So, and the teenagers that was the musicians, not the organists. They would leave their equipment because they were lazy. And that's how I, secondly, how I started learning how to play music. After I vacuumed the six states where he cut off, the, the church was on like five or six acres. I, me and my cousin being had to cut the church and I, I would get done quick and go in there and met, mess with their instruments. And they started noticing stuff like that. So they started taking chords home and snare drums. And <laughs> I was a kid, they were teenagers. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Uh, yeah, Willie but, was saying that um, after you guys had initially gotten together and decided to do this, that you kind of practiced and trained for a year. Uh, we only played probably we hit two a clubs. Couple, yeah, a couple two clubs. clubs. Was, yeah, Jolly Six. And some is a, a man the named Six. Yeah, and the Hammer Droppers. This man named Chicken Man. He had, he had one of those stylistic groups and they had, you know, Music was going into hip hop with, you know, Run DMC. So people was dressing like that with the Confederate hats and the members only jackets. And they still had on their clogs and flare legs and they whooped our ass. <laughs> 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 and uh, we went from the hammer droppers probably a few months later in that summer. And uh, we played and they didn't, they told us they was going to be played all night. And by the time we, got through playing Willie's daddy was at the door telling him it's time for you to come home to the Ponderosa. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's so dad. That's, uh, huh? Willie's dad. His, your dad yeah. said that, Willie? Yeah, I, I was still 17 years old. So he you was, know, I was he might have been younger. He might have been younger than that. And yeah, uh, something like that. And uh he was waiting outside the door and the birds was chirping because we had played to <laughs> <laughs> was it you and Clark I can't remember. Yeah, it was His me and Clark. Clark. He told we he were loading up the door. truck. <laughs> yeah, it's time for you to come back to the Ponderosa. And then Willie left us, and then Gerald went to college. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my my father made me quit the the band because he caught us at the club that night. So I oh. had to quit the band. And then that's when Gordon decided that it was a good idea to go down to Detroit. <laughs> And try to get the one of the records played. So they kind of, I guess, Gordon, you could tell that story how you all 
we're sitting in the lobby waiting on Mojo to arrive for work. Well, Mojo was like our uh, our R and B Wolfman Jack. Uh, you can look, listen to him on YouTube. How he did his show, he yeah. did the whole. He uh, he did the whole mothership coming down like a spaceship, and he talking with a deep voice. Listen to him when you get a chance. It's Electrifying Mojo, WJLB. And he was the hottest DJ in Detroit at the time. Yep. You know, in New York, it was uh, Frankie Crocker. In L.A., it was Greg Mack. I, I mean, in, you know, different cities. It was uh, Tom Joyner doing them. You know, he was, Chicago, fly, he was a fly, fly jock. Yeah. But, but any of these jocks, if you took your music to them, because they was on there, they didn't have to uh, listen to the program director. Mm-hmm. And I figured that out. I was like, because we had the demo and we took it to our local DJ radio station and we took it to uh, Saginaw, which is 30 minutes uh, north of us that were playing more explicit stuff because the guy here, the guy That's here, awesome. the guy here was uh, like my grandfather's age. <laughs> and when we played him tonight, he just died. But d- looking back at that, the, the lyrics to the night, you're so wet, you can barely wait, girl. And I'm looked at, you know, he when he passed, I said, hold on, man. And looked at his age. I said, man, we took some explicit lyrics to my grandfather. But he none of these people will add the add the songs. And then when I listened to Mojo, he would play uh knee deep for an hour. He would play head for an hour, 777. And I said, man, this guy. He must be doing, he must not be controlled by the program director. If you wanted to hear the cuss words on the song, he would play that. And uh, I told Melvin, because people was trying to go to college and some was going to the army. And basically we had this fantastic demo and everybody was about to give up. I said, we got to get this stuff to Mojo. And I talked to my older cousin who was, uh, name is Josh, and he was performing, if you ever heard of the rapper, MC Breed, he was the first Midwest yes. rapper. My he brother was, is from Detroit, and he wants to <laughs> say something right now about all of this. Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to ask, man, did uh, Electrifying Mojo or The Wizard, when y'all first came out, did he ever remix y'all into his sets? Uh, we brought The Wizard into the studio with us on the, uh, he helped us do Money, and uh, do, do, what's the uh, song that Melvin did? Uh, uh, oh man, I can't. Oh, darling, oh, darling, darling. You could you could tell us the house feel. Wizard and Mojo are a good friend. I'm really close to Wizard, and man, I'm close to Mojo. I in the '80s, man. I grew up listening to all their mixes, man. That's all we had back in Michigan back in the days. Electrifying Mojo and Wizard. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yep. Uh, the Wizard is in Germany, I think, uh, and overseas in Europe doing his stuff. Nice. Yeah, but uh, I talked to my cousin that uh, he was in a group with MC Breed and this dude named Steve, and their, their group was called uh, Kid Blast and the Task Force. And we were young. We didn't know our way to Detroit, none of that stuff. And I paid my cousin and begged him to take us to Detroit and he drove us down. We didn't have an appointment or anything. We just went down there on grace. And when we got there, the, the uh, security guard stopped us and said, he, I said, is the mojo here, uh, this, that, and other? And he was saying, do you have an appointment with him? But this is the Penobscot building. My man probably know what I'm talking about. Penobscot. Penobscot. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, he wasn't going to let us in. And mojo came in. Uh, probably 10 or 15, 20 minutes later. And he didn't look like he sound. He had a limp. And, you know, <laughs> and he was short. He had, you know, he had a, you know, this, this guy didn't look like he sound. And you, he won't let you take pictures of him to this day. And one of our engineer died, God rest his soul, Bernard. And I had just talked to Mojo the other day to see if he wanted a obituary or Bernard. But that's another story. But we went in there and, and we begged Mojo. We said, hey, man, we drove all the way from, 
We drove all the way to Flint. Please, please see us. Please, please, please. And he was reluctant. Then he told us to come up to his office. We went up to his office. It's a little couch in the front. And then he had a little office that only two or three people could fit in there. So some of us stayed in there. And some of us sat outside. And uh, they went in there. With My cousin went in there, which she shouldn't have did. But... <laughs> And the, it went for 15 minutes to two hours. Damn. And then he came out. He said, man, I'm going to make you guys national. I'm going to make you international. I'm going to make He was excited. And mm. that night. I would be excited, too. Yeah, he put <laughs> he put our demo on, on cassette. And he called us the mystery group. And the mystery group, you didn't have a name at that point? We had the no. name Private Boys School. Which gets changed because of uh, he introduced us to the he twin introduced lawyers. us to the twin lawyers, uh, Lloyd and Lloyd Leonia. They were they were uh, they were lawyers at that time, just starting law school. Oh wow! And uh, after we had that meeting, he started. I gotta, I gotta say, uh, Gerald, have you joined? Gerald is on the conversation too now. Gerald, are yep. you there? Yeah. Yeah. And Willie, Gerald, tell Gerald to talk. Hey, Gerald. Can you hear us? You probably muted. You are muted. Uh, Evan, something wrong with Gerald coming on. You know what it is. Willie, what was it like being that age and getting that access to high quality women like that? Come on now, give me the <laughs> give me the good stuff. I call it, I call it a a, a field trip with pussy. <laughs> a field trip with pussy. Yes, yeah. that's all it was. <laughs> From town to town, you were ready for the world. It just well, I'll tell you, we, we all came from humble beginnings, so it was a, an experience for us, something we had, of course, never experienced before, and I think we kind of just traded lightly at the beginning. There were some, you know, so-called holes in the group, but, you know, I think three of us kind of just traded lightly where the other three just became holes and just did <laughs> what they wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're I only wouldn't say be all a that. Young, ready for the yeah, world. You well, the <laughs> I'm not going to. I wouldn't names. say all that. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's, that's I wouldn't say all that. So, who did you guys open up for in the beginning when it was just tonight in the first step? I'm Luther gonna Vandross. Say, yeah, yeah, Luther Vandross and Whitney Houston. Uh, that was the first big major tour. Well, now let, we got to put that up. Put put that on on back burner because we was touring be by ourselves and we didn't oh, have yeah. a management company with the song out and uh yeah, yeah we, we can played. we can credit lonnie polk he yeah. was our role manager at the time so he was basically cutting deals getting us d gigs you know for you know some real substantial amount of money you know that we had never seen before so once we started tapping into that arena you know, we kind of drew some attention and, uh, you know, they wanted, you know, I, I would say they wanted their cut for the most part. They wanted oh, to wow. be on the game. Somebody phone breaking up. Yeah, you, you're breaking up. We can't hear you. What's now up, you're muted. Guys? Um, I was saying, oh, the internet is, hold on. We all messed up. Here we go. Okay. It's back. I was saying, yeah. did you guys get exploited like every other young group or what? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. We got exploited. From every um, documentary I've ever seen, you guys get robbed. Completely robbed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would say that was a part of the, the, the game. Um, we are fortunate that we wrote and produced our stuff. So we didn't get as robbed as some most of those artists, but we still, nonetheless, we got taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah, they take they take everything. They play your song for forty years, and 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 they take all the big money from it, and that's just the way it works out. But at mm -hmm. least you guys can still tour and stuff, and and, and make it right. Happen, so that's cool. Right. And you guys are always on tour. You never really stopped, did you? Yeah. We well, stopped. we did. We we stopped uh, in the in the mid nineties, like. Um, the beginning to, to mid nineties, we stopped and then kicked it back up toward the, the late nineties, early two thousands. 
That's what's up. So when, in my when Melvin brain, went solo. In my brain, it's all because I was a kid. I was from, you know, like 11 to like, let's say 18. Right. Okay. It's all one big collage of this great mu music. And at the time, for sure, I didn't understand the differences in everybody. And a lot of things sounded the same. Like, I'm a big fan of also New Edition and Troop and a lot of other groups. But you guys actually played your, your instruments, if I'm not mistaken, right? And that sets Absolutely, you apart. Right. Absolutely. That, that sets you apart from all those groups. Right, right. Uh, we came from that, um, the influences of, like, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Ohio Players, Cameo. So, you know, we were that, that band. That's, that's the era we came out of. Cameo. into the 80s you know that's so right. that's that's why we had that distinction so <clears throat> did you ever feel like you were the first of that genre though because you kind of came out in 85 and no. anyone else of that caliber was either 12 years old or not even together yet mint condition was out there but it hadn't Pop. You guys were way before yeah. Mint Condition. Yeah, yeah, we were before Mint Condition. I think Climax would probably be the closest. Climax, you know, friend of the show. We know Mrs. Group. Cheryl Williams. Yes, we know yeah. Cheryl Cooley. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cheryl Cooley. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Cooley, Bernadette. Uh, yeah, Joyce Climax Irby. is who you guys are like because they played yeah. their instruments too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they wrote they wrote some of their stuff as well. Yes. How many of the songs, that was one of my questions, how many of the songs that you guys have did you guys write, and how many did you have written? On the first album, every song. Every, everything. Everything. You wrote everything. Yes. Yeah. We awesome. did a soundtrack, and also we did a soundtrack with Eddie Murphy. It was called Running Scared back in the day that um, you, Michael Jackson's producer. I'm hey, sorry, this you drew about it up. up. So we were on the Beverly Hills soundtrack. Bear, Bear Hills Clock Cop 3 soundtrack. And we right. were also on the Running Scared soundtrack with Gregory Hines and Billy Gregory Crystal. Gregory Hines and, and uh, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal, yep. That's, mm -hmm. I, I own that movie. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there's a, yeah, that's a great movie. You guys were before that, though. We're talking 1985 when, like, Oh, Sheila came out. Oh, Sheila, right, right. That was 85. So, uh, you know, again, you know, it was from seeing all these other bands yes, is, yeah. you know, that's what influenced our sound. Yeah, Parliament, the Jacksons, Earth, Wind & Fire, Isaac Cameo, Brothers, Larry Blackman. Yeah, Cameo. Yeah. All of that stuff influenced us. We were, I, I told, when we played somewhere where, I think it was Jacksonville, with Larry Blackman, and I told, seeing them at the lobby in the hotel, I said, man, when I got my first boom box in the ninth grade, you know, Cameo used to drop their stuff in the summer and they used to come through here in the summer. I said, man, I used to be listening to uh, Shake Your Pants with my first Samuel Boom box. Uh, uh, they they going to say, well, I, well, we were your age, too. You know, they <laughs> joking, <laughs> but they, you know, they got to be like 70 years old now or give or take. Yeah. In, you guys were in really mid 60s, young. early 70s. Yeah. That's what's up? Um, we have two segments that we want to do before we let you guys go. So I okay. hope you can indulge us. The first one is we play a game on this show. And we're in season two right now of that game. And it's called The World's Widest Song. Okay, it's called The World's okay. Widest Song. So okay. when we play the songs, you have to judge which song. Not which song is better. And not which song you like more, but which song is just plain wider. Like you could be eating a full mayonnaise sandwich and this is the song that you put on. You know oh. what I'm saying? Okay. And our first contestant, uh, this is my show colleague right here. Colleague. What's, what's up? up he wanted to say hi. Right. And he wanted to, what's the first song? It's uh, Blinded by the <laughs> Hello. That is Blinded by the Light. Who's that performed for? Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Do you guys remember that song, Blinded by the Light? Yeah, it was played when we, it used to be played on the Midnight Special and Don Kirshner's rock concert. Uh, when that I used was to rock. stay up. 
I used to stay up. Yeah. That's rock and roll. Well, how you doing, roll, man? Yeah. You're on camera. What's up, man? Okay. So yeah. that's the first Finally. song. Dub, come here. That's the first song. The second song is going to be this right here. Here it comes right now. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? <laughs> Now I know for a fact that that song was playing <laughs> when you guys was playing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's Spandau Ballet. True. That's a yeah. good song. I like that. Spanish Ballet. I like that. Yeah. But it is, you know, distinctively kind of white song. It yeah. made it to the second round, so that's. I like that. There alone. Um, yeah. So out of I those two up. songs, I'm gonna go first with Willie. Willie, which one of those two songs do you think is whiter? I'm going to say the second song. The second song, Spandau yeah. Ballet. Okay. Yes. And what, what, what would be your reason? You're, mu you're a musical expert. What, what would be your reasoning? Uh, there was a soft rock era, and that song fits right smack dab inside of it. And it was mainly all white acts playing that soft music, but with an R&B feel. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, that's it right there. So okay. I'm going to see that, that track. Okay, Gordon, you're next. Yes. Yeah. Which one of those two songs you think is whiter? The Spanish ballet is Spandau more ballet. White. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What That's What's your reasoning? Because it was the MTV MTV era, and that's all we seen was Spanish ballet and police and the, uh, you know, uh, what's uh what's the guys from Boston? Uh, oh. I don't know. Come on. Boston. <laughs> Boston. I don't know. Like the rock group from Boston. Uh, come on, y'all know who I'm talking about. Who's the rock group from Boston? Boston. Chicago. Chicago. Oh, no, no, no. no Chicago. I'm talking about the one that did. Uh, I don't know. Rock this way with. Uh, oh, um, with... Run DMC. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Aerosmith. No, uh, Aerosmith. Yeah, yeah. Aerosmith. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all of that era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Gerald. We still want to hear I'm what your I'm vote gonna go is. with that. I'm gonna go with the Spanish man, the tempo of the song and the instrumentation of the song for me. What did it? Right, that's right. I noticed when that song came on, you smiled really big. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's our that's our late late high school years, junior high. Yeah, Locked it reminded me of some things. It reminded yeah, me of some things. I, I used to listen to AM radio and stuff. Soft rock would come on all the time on AM radio. So, okay. Yeah. Well, the that does it right there. We know who uh, is going on to the next round is Spandau Ballet. Now, like I said in the beginning, and like I told Willie when, when I first reached out, I'm a huge, I'm a mega fan. I'm a, I'm a ready for the world mega fan. Okay. Thank and you. Although Damn. I'm going to mess this up completely. We have a tribute for you that we're going to do right now, okay? Me and the boys here, okay? okay? So I want you to just give me 30 seconds to put my jacket on, all right? Or is this an all-white band? Or? This is the new band right here. Okay. Right. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you landscape? Or poetry. Yes, I'm I'm landscape. Uh, it's the best way to shoot see. video. Oh. Oh shoot. <sighs> da, da, da. Ready. Can you see it? Ready, ready, oh, ready. Snap. You ready for the right now. Man. Here we go. How do I record this? Oh, oh we're going to send you a recording of this. How about that? Okay, that's what's up. Now, I wanted to do the karaoke version, but it didn't sound as good. I can't do no motherfucking karaoke version. I'll do this version right here, which y'all sing. I like that. I, I like that. Oh, here we go, whatever. All right. oh. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Good for the goose. It's always good for the gander. Oh, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even see nothing. You can't see that? <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> you got to move your screen over. Always to the right first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, baby, love me right. Let me love you to get it right. <laughs> Why can't you let me other be? Because with you is where I got to be. Oh, sugar, where you been? Hanging out with your male friend. <laughs> Did it freeze up? Somebody yeah, it'll come, come back. Let's see if they get the right steps. Oh, oh, oh Sheila, <laughs> let me love you till the morning comes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that look like Sheila. us. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> That's it. That's everything. <laughs> Y'all nailed it. I had it. to do the second verse. Yeah. We nailed it. No. We nailed it. You heard it there first. I'm ready for the world. Yes, you guys, sir. This is like a dream for me. I love you guys. Amen. I, I, man, there was nights in my world, man. I've been, I've been down those roads, and I listened to Ready for the World. Believe that. Believe Thank that, you guys. So much, Thank man. You. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. And I want to know one last question before I go. My sure. whole life, I want to know this: Which one of you motherfuckers is British? Because who says <laughs> this? What's good for the goose is always good for the gander. That's Melvin. <laughs> That's Melvin. He ain't here. So you guys tell Melvin real rich. Said, what's up with the British accent? Yeah. Right. Thank you so uh, much. We will send you this video. Do with it right. as you will. Thank you. One, you one of the funnest hug, interviews we've had, out. man. Great, great show, man. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. All right now. Oh shit, that was fun. <laughs> oh man. Thank you. Dude, Thank you, I Gerald.